What's up, everyone, and welcome into the Backliners podcast, Agro and Barracuda, as per usual. This week, mm-hmm. joined by the two-time, the back-to-back, the reigning MVP, the 2019-2020 Smite World Champion. Wait, it's 2018. What? Wait. Wait, 2019-2021. Well, yeah, technically, but it, it oh. just makes more sense if you go back-to-back on years, even though they weren't hmm. played in 2021. Neil, do you have a preference? I mean, it's your title, you know, so. Go with mine. I don't care. There All it is. I know, in my eyes, I've never won once until I three-peat, and then I've won three times. <laughs> and, and you're done? <laughs> hmm? That, is Neil, that not good motivation? No, not really. Why I mean, not? I mean, I guess it is, but like, all right, yeah, I guess I'm there. Um, That's fine, I guess. Th- this is going to be, look. We're, it's not Sunday night, it's Monday night. Already, our vibes are, are different, you know? Our vibes are different. Uh, I'm feeling better than normal. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm feeling pretty... Can I disclaimer? Yeah. I have stitches in my move, so I what? can't really smile or laugh that hard. <laughs> okay. So, I, so my expressions are going to be very limited. That seems like not a great time to do a podcast when you have stitches no, in your fine. move. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine, but I'm going to be very... Very much so trying to suppress laughter. So don't make me laugh, first okay. off. Okay. All right. And second off, I will Pharaoh, only just be doing very slight smiles. Very okay. slight smile. What? Well, it's just like better that way, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You're probably yeah. going to laugh by looking at Barra if you had to guess. So be it. So now you're that's just going to get this. You're, sh- you're going to get a great shoulder workout, Barra, if that's your game plan for the rest of this <laughs> podcast is to hold up your hand to your camera. Um, I'm very strong. I've been working out lately. Neil, what 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 happened to your to your mouth? I basically, I had a root canal a long time ago. Okay, this is a kind of funny story. We're gonna go on a segue. Yeah, please. Oh, do. you're gonna laugh at your story. So I, I used to have like I had to get a root canal when I was younger, like maybe maybe even like a decade ago. I don't know, like at least at least six years ago, and essentially it like failed or something. So I had to like go and redo it. And when they were, they basically just redid a root canal, essentially. Mm. And they have to, like, cut open your gums and stuff and, like, blah, blah, blah. And after, like, it's there's an infection in there because it's, like, messed up, right? Mm-hmm. And then after, my endodontist talks to me, like, as I'm on the way out the door, and he goes, I'm surprised you survived this long with this infection. And I sit there, and I'm thinking, does he mean, like, <laughs> does he mean literally or figuratively? And he just, like, walked away, said, I'm going to ask him. He just goes, I'm surprised you've survived this long with that infection. And I was like... Mocha should i be dead ass. like should i have just been deceased right now or do you think that that guy like called his wife and he's like man i should have killed someone years ago but <laughs> well different than a dentist but i was just like sitting there and i was like hmm that's interesting and i guess i'll just never know because i'm not gonna phone him and be like Hey, when you said survive, <laughs> did you mean like i should be dead or yeah something like that you know I'm starting to get the feeling that I shouldn't trust any, any like dentist or anything like that. Cause my wife had a very bad experience, like with some root canal nonsense. I don't know. It's something like along those lines. And I'm like, maybe they just aren't to be trusted at this point. You know, don't hate the player, man. I feel like I have to hate the player <laughs> in this, in this instance. Sorry about making you laugh, man. I apologize. I apologize about that. It's okay. We'll keep it very serious. On the path. Yeah, I'm speed. sure that's going to go great for me. Incredibly seriously, as we break down the season eight map uh, and what it means for each role, we're on to support. Um, historically, the second most broken role in Smite, uh, mm-hmm. and will continue to be the you most. You guys just both agree with that instantly. What? Yeah, it's obviously true. That's not even a, a debatable point, Neil. Yeah, I'm powerless. Uh, really? Okay. You think so? Of course, we all are. Okay. Neil, I, I talk to Neil a lot. Um, dear podcast listener, and I I can't help but get sucked into his game. Neil brings you down to his game really well, and that's exactly why he's won two world championships in a row. Anytime Neil says anything, I instantly have to hit him with the very Neil Ma. You think so? Or really? And and he's gonna double down, and then I'm gonna triple down, and we're not gonna get anywhere on this whole episode. So. That's just, a, I'm just letting you know right now. That's how it's going to be. Um, so I apologize. I don't agree with that, but that's Neither fine. do I, and that's fine. Um, let's, we've been talking more about global map stuff right away uh, before we get into the role-specific stuff. Neil, how have, you, uh, how have you felt so far just broadly about Season 8? 
Uh, I always think that new changes to the map are always good. Like, a new map in general and just new items. It's just really refreshing, right? The map is obviously a lot bigger, so there's a lot of different... Uh, it, it definitely changes the pace of the game and how it's played. Uh, obviously, I haven't practiced or anything. But playing ranked, even, it feels really weird. Like, it feels like... It feels more like you're in the wrong places at the wrong times in this season because if you're not there, it's, like, really hard to mosey on over. Like, you're just mm -hmm. not going to be there. Like, for instance, if there's a fight in solo and I'm camping a dual lane in ranked, it feels like there's just no way I'm going to be there. Whereas last season, maybe if you're, like, halfway in between the mid-duo jungle, you could get there. But now it just feels like you can be pretty well displaced. So it's been a really cool experience, but it does... I do feel like it's a bit... Like, you do feel a bit lost at times, for sure. It's big. Uh, and, and like you said, it takes, uh, it takes some time to get to where you need to be. But, um, personally, I, I've still been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it, it, it's been pretty cool. The other thing we've been, um, talking about is global anti-heal changes. Um, do you think that those have been effective? Do you think that that's the right direction? Uh, wh what do you think about those? Mm, to me, it kind of feels like a band-aid solution, I'm not saying that necessarily means it's bad, but it kind of just feels like they're like, ah, oh, healing isn't really working the way we want it. Global anti-healing thing, just like slap it on there and see what happens. It's hard to say because, like, I haven't played enough coordinated games, like lots of time in rank when people have healing, they just all in anyways and they die. It's not like they poke you in the back up and they heal and then they just play like like complete dorks and it's like, it's so annoying. But uh, I do feel like it's, it's decent, but I think it's kind of weird that they also nerfed anti-heal items at the same time. I don't really like when two things kind of get, like, nerfed at the same time, mm -hmm. or, like, change at the same time, and you don't have time to feel out one of the changes at a time. But I think it's overall pretty good for the game, because I think it could be really oppressive, uh, just with the size of the map as well, uh, if healing was just as powerful as it was last season. Yeah, I mean, as someone who uh, w won a world championship with a hell abuser last year, uh, <laughs> you can you kind of know. Am I a trial? I mean, is that why I'm here? <laughs> you, you might be. How do you plead, Neil? I plead the fifth. Smart man. But you're Canadian, so that doesn't count for you. Get owned. Do, do, do you have the fifth in Canada? Is that a thing? Why not? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Sure. <laughs> I should have just said nothing, and then what would you have done? Yeah, I don't know. I guess I could have. I kind of would have gotten owned. Yeah, good point, Chad. And an Afro abuser. He, he abused hell and Afro all year long. All year? Okay, Afro, definitely not all, all right, year. Not, a, not Afro all year, but... Uh, Barry, you can't laugh. You you abused Aphrodite last year as well. Though, I don't know. Oh. If, if someone got abused on Aphrodite on your team, it was Ven the first time we played it. Am I right, everyone? Oh, <laughs> uh, you're right. Hey! That's a big got him moment. <laughs> got him. <laughs> Listen. Uh, there was a day where we scrimmed PK and they would not stop picking afro and that was a terrible day because they would not win and they just kept picking it and but look where it, it got us you got lucky perseverance <laughs> is key there was a day lucky. we picked a lot of stuff against you and we didn't win but sometimes that's just how it goes mm -hmm. neil sometimes, uh isn't it yeah. weird that we had zap on as well um who also has gone back to back of course uh and barra didn't have the the cojones to say he got lucky only to you. Don't you think that's kind of messed up? I have more respect for Zap. I think that's fun. Holy God. Respect is, there a, is respect is earned, you know. Is I there a, it, then I'm, that's on me. A Barra Ma feud that I'm on that I was unaware of? Should I have cleared this guest with no, you? No, I just have <laughs> no respect for support players. Oh. No. You're gonna all. respect me when you're trying to back in front of me, that's for sure. I retired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that's a W. That's that's the most respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not because of you. <laughs> well, in some what? ways, bro. Come on. When you think I'll about it, I'll take credit for it either way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's how it's got to be. Uh, that's how it's got to be from time to time. Okay, um, Barra. Look, mm -hmm. I feel bad during these non ADC episodes because I feel like you're just kind of there. We t we commented on this last week with her. Away. I'm just here to roast Neil. Okay. But you gotta so so it's kind of like a com so he kind of is on trial actually not he mm -hmm. this wasn't planned but we kind of did ambush him here didn't we? I was ready. Clearly, I was not. That's good for okay. you, I guess. Also, real quick, yeah. Okay, so I've been playing a lot of rank this week. Yeah. And I when was... supports go sovereignty, thobs, thobs, thieves, mm -hmm. part word with the uh, support item, whatever, mm -hmm. like the hundred twenty prots. Yeah. You can't hurt anyone. No. Like. 
Not allowed. You literally need like 70% pin to hurt like their teammates. And I'm pretty sure that made percent pin value go up like so much for other roles because of the OP sport role. Mm -hmm. Even for me, honestly, like whenever I'm playing ranked, I want to dive. I just have to, you have to get percent pin because like flat pen doesn't do anything late game at all to people around the sport at least. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing is that I really don't feel like building percent pin most of the time. So maybe what? I just don't feel kind of like good. Yeah. Why would not? Here, okay, look at it this way, bro. Look at it this way. Okay, okay. I'm playing raw, okay? Uh-huh. No, I'm not going to heal abuse. I'm playing uh, I'm playing um, Merlin, okay? I'm playing Merlin. Okay. okay. And I'm about to hit a tank with my ability. If I have bought Soul Reaver, and I see that little extra number come up, I'm like, damn. I'm doing damage. Like, my Soul Reaver's owning right here. So you just love yellow damage. Yes, I yeah. love yellow damage. That's big for me. I, so I you love Soul Gym and Reaver, and then you're like, man, that 30 and 40 right there. Slamming. Ooh. Slamming. Bad Bad up. You're getting it. You're getting it. The, look, everyone knows that I'm like number one, uh, a, like yeller of you don't have enough pen in your build, and I hate when people do that. Um, but I don't have enough pen in my builds right now. I'll be the first one to admit it. Why don't they, they just put, put pen, pen on, on like. Rod. Well, yeah, but I've, so I've got 10%. I'm building Rod every game. <laughs> You're telling me I need more? Ten's a lot now that I think about it. Right. Yeah. Big number. That's like a fourth as much like pen that you could get just naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like I'm a good spot. Good. Look, after I finish good. my starter item and all six items, and then I buy an Elixir of Speed, then I'll get like an Obsidian Ooh, Shard. 3K pot too. Right, 3k pot adds pen, percent That's pen. Big. So that'll be after that, yeah. So Guys, we need to go to 40 there. or 50 minutes for that pen online. <laughs> <laughs> Just farm, guys. I'm going to get there. It's not a problem. Uh, all right, let's talk about why support is OP yet again, uh, just like every other season before it. Always has been, always will be. Except for, like, one, what was it? Season, was it season, like, beginning of season five supports yes, were pretty you useless? you were a paperweight, man. Yeah. You still are. Yeah, you were kind of useless then, and that was a good time. Um, but it's been darkness ever since. Uh, let's talk about your, your starter items, because that's kind of how we've been starting these off. Sentinels is the first one up on the list, and I feel like we okay. could probably start there. Or stop mm -hmm. there, uh, because yeah. it is just better. Uh, it's only 500 gold, 75 health, 7 of each prot, 7 MP5, and then being within assist range of a minion or jungle camp, death without dealing the killing blow awards seven bonus gold and also restores 12 health and eight mana. Uh, you do have to be near an allied God in order to make that work. Um, Sentinels is the best. I think everyone kind of is, is on the same page on that, but why is it better than the other options right now, Neil? Mm, well, the other one like war flag is actually just kind of useless. Well, it's not useless, but you just fall so far behind. Like the fact that, that sentinels has um all that gold attached to it whenever you clear a wave so there's six minions in a wave and you have seven extra gold per minion and then they come every 30 seconds so if you don't build it you're instantly after like a minute and a half just like 100 gold down almost so it's kind of ridiculous and then the only other one that's even kind of comparable is benevolence i think it's called mm -hmm. but it gives you like two gold per five and yeah, it bugged. goes up barely per level and it gives you a tiny bit of XP, but you give a lot of your experience. Is it just experience or is it experience and gold to your character? Gold and experience. But, but like, so you're kind of putting yourself even further behind. And, like, hunters, like, don't do anything early game anyways. When when you go to what? med, sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> and then you're sitting in that lane, you're jamming it down, you're getting ganked on cooldown. ADCs are either 20 and 0 or 0 and 20, and that's how it's mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It just feels like every other starter you go, you fall way too far behind. War flag is good for your ADC for snowballing lane, but again, you fall so far behind. And then the cost as well, right? It's just so cheap. You can start boots too with it. It's just insane sustain. And then before even talking about the upgrade, like the upgrade is just the best one essentially too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sentinels and braces just way too. I meant actually the boon. The boon is so good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the, boon yeah. Is, the boon is not. I'm just kidding. Don't build boon. Don't do it. <laughs> that thing's so bad. Yeah, Boone is 300 health, 45 of each protection, 20 MP5, and assisting an enemy target dying provides 15 bonus gold and restores 3% of your health and mana. Neil, hold on. I'm theorycrafting already. The, the oh, no. wheels are turning up here, my man. 
You get Sentinel's Boon, and you get Mail of Renewal. Okay. And you're sitting there on the siege, Mm -hmm. and you are just healing. I mean, like you said, there's six minions in a wave. You're getting 18% of your health and mana every Mm -hmm. wave. Okay. Okay. That's good, right? And then, if you kill the the tower or the phoenix or any god, you're going to get even more healing from Mail of Renewal. Sure. Where's the problem? Um, well, the problem is like you got you got like you got like a nice neighborhood on one end. Uh huh. You no, know, it's like it's fine. It's like it's like it's it's nice. Right. Got a good community. It's gated. And then you got Beverly Hills. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Can I? You are you triggered me right away. It, it, down in Georgia, there are a million. Every apartment complex is gated. I feel. Yeah, like. it actually sucks. I and they it. sell it as a positive. Mm, and it's it just sucks. not. It's, it's just not so a positive. Inconvenient. It's so inconvenient. It's so annoying to deal yep. with every day, and there is no benefit to the the safety you of your apartment n- complex. <laughs> None. Literal zero. Literal Why zero. literal zero? Why? Because it's always broken. The gate is always open, anyways. And uh, here's what I'm. If I see someone who's stuck, can't get in the gate, that their code isn't working, whoever they're calling isn't answering, I'm buzzing them in because I'm a because I'm not trying because I've been in that their shoes. And I don't want to, I didn't want to deal with that then, you know? And I, I would want to get buzzed in if I were in that instance. Even better for my analogy, so you got gated community on one <laughs> side, and then you got Beverly Hills, where Beverly Hills is, is you're just drinking from the fountain of youth. Mm-hmm. None of you or your boys can perish ever. It's just not possible. You're just keeping everyone alive until the end of time, and that's, that's what it is. Well, obviously, um, immortality would be bad, right? Can we all agree with that? No. I see. Uh, I mean, we could go down this road if you really yeah, want day, to, like, but it's gonna take us off. Guys, track. it's a Monday. I'm in a mood. Okay, dude. I don't think it's that bad. Okay, well, well, it depends on the type uh, of immortality. Surely, it's just terrible. What like, you if your body's gonna, planets? if your body is going to, like, j- Google, can I help you? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, who is that? <laughs> what do you? Shut up. Do you want to know if immortality is good or bad? Hey, Google. Stop! What was that, dude? She was still going, man. That was so troll. Google's what is going listening. on here? Okay. Oh, boy. Obviously, it matters if your body is going to decompose or if, like, you're just going to be immortal and you're going to stay, like, 25 forever. It's different, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. But even then, everyone you know would die and then you'd be sad and you'd have to make new friends and you'd go through that same depression all over again. I don't know. Well, you would eventually just become completely disinterested with all that stuff eventually, right? right? And there's it no just wouldn't matter anymore because and you couldn't be released be from the different. mortal plane. Yeah, and then you just live forever, and then everything would be so boring, right? Just going to the sun, I would just be warm, yeah. dude. Yeah, you're you're immortal. I would just be in agony. You could probably you'd still <laughs> feel pain, right? You would just I don't know. Mm, tough to say. I would yeah. hope you wouldn't if you're immortal. I think you would. Immortal in the terms of like you can't like cut your limbs off or anything like that. Like you just like, can't die. Period. Can't like I, I kind of like the situation you don't like feel pain and you can just like regenerate, but you just live forever. Oh, I would pull. So some then it's kind of really like, are, wild do you want to live forever? Is kind of the question, you know. Seems like a lot of hassle to me, you know. Oh, I'd be down. I feel like it'd be fun for like the first like. I I don't even know how many years. Like I don't know, like twenty thousand years, maybe. I don't know. Twenty thousand. That's a long, long time, time of fun, bro. Yeah. yeah, but then the if, next if I thought trillion I would, years aren't that fun. If I thought I would have fun for 20,000 years, I would do it. But I don't but think I would. what about the next trillion years after that? I think I would have fun for like 200, man. And that's still not bad. That's a lot more on the other end is all I'm saying. If you're talking in the 20,000 range, then that's a lot more. Than, okay, we got to get just, back to support talk. I'm just thinking there's a lot more you can explore in like the grand scheme of things, you know. That is true. And maybe they could find a way, maybe science could find a way to end my life. <laughs> wow. It's getting yeah. dark. All right, back to support. Okay, yeah, That's, sorry. Anyway. Yeah, all I really want is for science to find a way to end my life. <laughs> Release me from this mortal shell. So, basically, the long story short, the boon Don't is not a boon. Sentinels and the boon. Sentinels embrace makes you immortal. And you need science to find a way to end you and your boys' <laughs> life. Oh, 
Oh boy. So I mean, pick whatever one you want. Right. I mean, I think we covered that. If Who's you don't really know to what say to buy which now, one is better after right. this conversation. If, if you don't know what to buy now, we can't help you. I mean, that's just the best analysis you'll have all of season eight. I'm, there's no point in me even being on a broadcast from here on out because I've uh, I've peaked for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's or talk. Five. No, no, benevolence, Bear. I gotta go in order. Why are you going? No one even buys that. You. Sh- but we're talking about what we could do. If P- or, if like X change gets made, you should start buying benevolence. You well, know what first I mean? off, it's just bugs, so no one's going to buy it. Okay, well let's assume it works. Let's assume it's doing its job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the big thing here, Neil, for me for benevolence, the 750 gold price tag is a lot in comparison to Sentinel's gift. I think Sentinel's is too low at 500. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would I think that like 600 at least for Sentinel's. Mm-hmm. And bringing benevolence down to like six fifty, or something along those lines would would make sense to me. But would that be enough? A, a change like that in order to make you want to buy benevolence? No way. I think Sentinels could be the most expensive. I'd still want it to be honest. Mm. Like I said, you just make all the gold up instantly, anyways. I think it's mm-hmm. just kind of stupid. It's the cheapest by a large margin when it's already the best. Like I've loaded into a lot of ranked games. And obviously, the first thing you want to do is test things. And every single time I think about testing things, I just look at the items and I just go, like, what is there to test? This one's the cheapest, it's the best, that gives you the most flexibility. Like, you could start boots to it that you can't do with any of the other ones. So, like, it's it's just really weird, I don't know. And, you like, start boots to it? I have been, yeah. I don't, I don't really know how it's going to be, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but boots too. like, you don't need health pots either with it. Or mana pots, rather. Like, you don't need... Like, I just go on um, boots too and two, ma- and two health pots, and then... By the time you're low, depending on how you play the lane, you can just back and finish your full boots, and then you—that's before the first purple spawn too. So if oh, they okay. like mess up their waves or something, you can just invade them because they're so strong. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that there's a world once teams start scrimming in earnest and really working on uh, how to break the map at a competitive level. The fact that benevolence gives extra XP to nearby allies is going to be a big deal. And I think that there is a chance, you can tell me if you disagree, but I think there's a chance that there's going to be some meta starts that come about that are only enabled by something like Benevolence, just generating XP out of literal nowhere for your, for your ADC. Uh, Could could you see something like that becoming the case whenever it's time for actual competitive play? Mm, Maybe, but at the same time, like what you would have to hit like a little five power spike right before something like spawn and they would have to be not level five right mm-hmm. so it's kind of like a weird timing because it's not like you can do anything with it early game in the first like minute or so because invaders curse like it like like there's nothing really on the map everyone's clearing their whole jungle basically by the time 30 seconds rolls around and so you'd have to hit some weird timing but then on the other hand wouldn't you just want to draft more pressure and just be stronger like if that was kind of the case wouldn't you just want to maybe try and go for a play earlier draft more pressure maybe get a kill have like a like a mannequin cheese or like a like a war flag for sustain so you guys can run them over instead maybe because mm. the way benevolence is right now doesn't really give you any strength in lane it just gives your adc more experience yeah and usually you have in dual HP lane five over sentinel's gift that's the one thing it doesn't have is mm-hmm. that you have actual hp5 yeah yeah but i don't think it matters too much because i would just like if i was that concerned about it like by the time you're looking for a play you probably would have backed and you could just buy a health pot or something if you really wanted to be strong for the fight yeah or like a multi-pot or something i don't know it just feels like there's just different options you would still maybe even think about going and then on top of that too it still depends on how the pressure of the map is going too just because maybe you're like the jungler comes over or something right Mm -hmm. yeah i think uh benevolence i I still think there's a chance that you could probably make something work but it it would have to be very coordinated and very specific and i wouldn't recommend doing it in ranked for sure uh basically no matter what um Agreed, yeah. the, how about compassion the what, the upgrade that no one talks about for benevolence the 300 health uh 30 hp5 15 mp5 and i think now i think it's got some changes at this point um i think it got some magical protection if i remember correctly uh but damage taken by nearby allies is reduced by 15 percent up to a maximum of 100 damage and the reduced damage is redirect, re- redirected to you as magical damage um is that is that an interesting uh thing that you could see yourself buying if benevolence wasn't strictly worse than sentinels 
So it re just reduces the damage you take by 15%. They take by 15% and redirects that to you? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it gets reduced oh. by 15% and then and then it runs through your mitigations mm -hmm. as well. Because I thought it might just, like... Hmm, I kind of thought it worked differently. Like, I was thinking, like, if someone did hit you for, like, a, up to 150 damage, just come to you. Like, I was thinking if someone picked Anubis, you could just mm. buy it and they just wouldn't ever be able to carry or something. I don't know. It still seems kind of trash to me, though, to be honest. Like, mm, I shouldn't say trash. Like, it seems fine. But I don't know. Like, when I think about the amount of damage that's going out, it comes in bursts, right? Like, mm -hmm. if a Scylla crushes your carry and you're taking away 150 damage, it's not really changing the fight or anything, right? Yeah. Mm hmm so that's kind of where I've, uh, I don't, I don't really feel that being super impactful. I'll have to try it out maybe, but I kind of just feel like Sentinels embrace the extra protections the whole time. It could just be more valuable than 15% damage mitigation. Right? Like if a Soul Lander doesn't have much pen, they run at your guy and you're giving them like 50 protections or whatever, or like maybe even 40, like that's pretty comparable in my opinion. Sure. And when you're alone, it makes you so tanky too. Like, like Sentinels is just the best individual defense item in the game anyways pretty well. Yeah, Barry, yeah, I mean... I feel like, as a backliner, I'm kind of down to have 15% of the Osiris who's chopping me down in the backlines auto attacks, you know, redirected away from me. I uh, feel like that would make a pretty big difference, but I think Neil's probably right. I mean, that, that Sentinels embrace prots are, might just be worth more, but I'm not really a math guy, so I'm not sure. How, have you played with both of these at all? Have you got any feelings? I haven't seen benevolence in any of my games and then sentinels is in like i'd say like 60 to 70 percent of my games and the rest are war flag mm -hmm. um but sentinel just seems by far the best and i don't know benevolence would have to get changed to where people are already in that tree looking for something late game over the sentinel tree i think because right now in my opinion especially for competitive i think sentinels is just better unless you're playing for like a two or four minute purple with war flag like there's no reason to not already be in that tree. And right. I think that wise, I think there would have to be like a lot of dots coming your way, like an Erlong with, I don't know, like a ver like a dot build or something, or like another dot build. Because if it reduces like, like if I get Hoombots 2 and there's like a Crusher proc and a Heartseeker proc and like two other procs, if it's taking off of all of those procs, maybe it's good. I think it would. But if it, and maybe it's good, but... It would depend on the actual team fight, and I don't. What's the range on compassion? Um, it doesn't have it listed on these patch notes. Okay. I would imagine it's typical aura range. It would need to be a pretty large range for me to, like, for to for me to want my support to buy that. I'm have to be a, a pretty hefty range because if it's like a mediocre range, then you'd literally have to like sit on me in fights, and I think mm -hmm. having your support like melee range of you is not great. Yeah, it also is kind of worse, though, for the support, the bigger the range is, because it's not just you, it's all allies. So mm -hmm. they're taking poke damage from anybody think, getting hit. Yeah. If you're slamming magical defense and it's a late game fight, like, dude, there was a guy in my game who had 300 of each prod, and he just built, like, Solve, Heartward, Thieves, and then uh, upgraded the Sentinels. And I was like, okay. Yeah, and they're not so playing. Even, mm. yeah. So I was kind of thinking, too, like, Say you're like a Sobek or something, like just for the sake of argument, you like pluck some, like pluck somebody, mm. and you get like sundered, and like someone stacked on you, you're just getting like railed by a ton of damage. You'd get melted instantly too. Mm -hmm. Like it yeah. seems like something you might build on like Ganesh or Kepri maybe. Yep. But even then, like I don't know, I kind of feel like that might even just be overkill and just still not even as good as like a Sentinels, right? Because you do fall behind building Benevolence the way it is now. It just doesn't right. give you as much gold or like as much gold, or as much sustain in the lane really. So I feel like you still would just fall behind, and I would rather just maybe... Like, in my eyes, I'd rather just be getting more gold, getting my items online faster, getting to, like, level 17 faster as well, and being able to build my, my, my upgrade first, rather than just maybe, like, saying, oh, when I'm level 17, this will be sick. Right. Like, I feel like most games you don't really plan to go in and just be like, I'm going to make sure when I hit level 17, I'm going to be owning everybody, like, as a support especially. Maybe in other rules, like ADC or something, it might be more important to be thinking about your late game upgrade and how it works there but like for support it's just about kind of keeping up and making mm -hmm. sure you can hit power spikes mm -hmm. do you think uh do you think it would be broken if instead of you uh as it reads now anytime you would gain experience or gold from an enemy dying you only take 90 percent and share 10 percent with nearby allies 
Do you think it would be broken if it instead you only take 95%, but you still share 10% with nearby allies? So you basically generate an extra 5% golden experience as long as you're sharing? I think that'd be a cool change. I think that's kind of fine, to be honest. Like, it just, it just depends how the game's going. But, like, I, I could see that being a good a good item with a bit of incentive and a bit of, like, planning around what you're going to do, right? Because if you want to group up and fight early and kind of snowball that way, that could be interesting. It might make snowballing a bit strong, but then again, like Bear was saying, if you're trying to snowball, maybe you just go Warflag like, anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely an interesting idea. I think that's... Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either, right? Just to, like, try and give a bit of incentive that way. I think the way I would probably change it would just be increasing, like, the gold per five and the XP per five. Because then it would be cool because it's kind of counterintuitive, but you'd be more satisfied being in the jungle roaming between. You'd still be benefiting rather than having to soak every wave like you kind of want to with Sentinels. Mm -hmm. So I think that could be an interesting distinction, but it's kind of weird, too, because you're not really splitting the XP and giving more XP to somebody, but... Kind of just a thought. I think that'd be probably a better way to change it to make it more appealing would just be increase the passive on it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Animosity is the other one. Everyone talks about this in terms of not getting a starter item, playing things like Erlong or Alquang, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. As for support, do you, is there any world where you think, you know, Ymir, you're getting in there, you, you, you're kind, you guys are kind of owning your level 17 really early. I can just go Animosity and one-shot their backline? Like probably work right mm, I, I probably wouldn't even like because the problem is is it's magical damage it's percent magical damage and mm -hmm. all the guardians just attack so slow so it's counterintuitive because the only person you can build magical panel on obviously is magical characters so, like is for ymir you'd want to get like penetration of some sort so when you hit them with your animosity does reasonable damage because like if you're an erlang or something someone that has good attacks but you can fit in their build and support you're hitting this backliner who's next to their Sentinels Embrace Thebes, whatever, character, and your magical damage is like nothing, right? Right. So it's kind of weird counterintuitive kind of weird thing. And I don't I don't even know. Like on a Guardian, like how how much are you really slapping people? Like I don't know. It just doesn't really seem With kinda mirror, seems gimmicky bro? to me. I think you're kinda slamming. You're you're attacking so slow. Like I just feel like in competitive it's, it wouldn't work. Coward. That would be cool. That would be cool. I just feel like in competitive though, you never really is sport like autoing people. Like, hardly ever to Yeah, be I was going to say, like, you're throwing up your mirror wall, and that's kind of yeah, it. Yeah, like, I don't know. It seems like it'd be good in, in in ranked when you can just go find someone on their own and just, like, solo them. Like, I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's But, good. like, in competitive, <laughs> that's just never going to happen, right? Like, Wait, Neil, this is, I mean, this this can make Hachiman support go to the next I was level. Th I, well, you have no idea how much theory crafting I've been doing on that. I'm not even kidding. Whew. Dude, I was thinking about that so hard and so long, but apparently Hachi's ult has been just gutted, yeah. and I haven't even dared to touch him since the change. I just can't. I just can't do it. Unlucky. Hate to see it. Um, all right, let's talk War Flag. This is the most aggressive option here for support. Seven hundred gold, either ten physical power or twenty magical power, one hundred health and ten MP five. Being in the range of a minion or jungle camp death without dealing the killing blow restores six health and six mana to all allies within 55 units, which is auto attack range, and also provides allies with a stacking self buff of 1% movement speed and 2% attack speed. Those stacks last eight seconds and can stack up to 10 times. Is this good enough to be the aggressive option, Neil, or do you think it's it, it's still not quite good enough? I think the way it is right now, well, the way, it's hard to say because in scrims, like, it could change a lot of things. Like, who knows? if that difference is going to be so impactful that you're just going to have to get it or not, like, are you going to get run over? I kind of feel like it's not going to be enough. Like, I feel like if I just pick something similar pressure to you and you go Warflag and I go to Sentinels, and I maybe just buy, like, an extra potion or two at some point in the game, like, I could probably just have similar sustain. And as long as we just don't really mess up and put ourselves in a dangerous spot, we'd be fine just going relatively even. Mm -hmm. And then you're just kind of going to be at a disadvantage because... Same thing, you're just going to be so far behind in, in gold the whole game. You'll be hitting your curves later. So I, I kind of think it's not quite there. And then on top of that too, like just when you look at the upgrades too, like down the line we hit level 17, Spartan Flag seems interesting, but doesn't seem like super practical. Like I've, I've tried it a couple times and it just feels like it, sometimes you just drop it randomly, like not really when you want to. Whereas the Sentinels Embraces is always getting you value no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's just giving you, you and your teammates so many protections it's keeping your backline alive so much longer. I just feel like the 10% damage increase isn't, like, nearly as good as the offsetting aura, like I said before. 
like for like a like a soul laner on your carry, especially when Thorns is in the game. Like Sentinels embrace also the yeah, on the side note just counters Thorns completely, like for soul laners who are warriors. Like they just you just can't buy it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a Sentinels embrace, all of a sudden Thorns is something that can be back in the mix, right? So there's just a lot of benefits I see to Sentinels embrace. The protections maybe outweighing the ten percent damage increase, and I just don't think that you could. The way it is right now, you could necessarily snowball it so out of control by getting a Warflake over Sentinels that it would offset the gold differential that the sports are going to be seeing. Yeah, it Warflag seems like it, it's better, you know, really early, level 1 through mm -hmm. 3. Yeah. You're going to get way more value out of it because it actually has power and has sustain for both you and your lane partner. And then at level 17, I think both of these, uh, these upgrades are really good because they provide a ton of health, 300 health each. War Banner gives can give 20% movement speed and 40% attack speed to your team if you max mm -hmm. out those stacks, which is an obscene... No I mean, get you add a Shogun's and a War Banner, you're just giving like an absurd amount of attack speed that is true. to your team. And then they've got a, a Hunter's Cowl or a leader's cow or whatever one it is that gives your team attack speed as an aura. Mm -hmm. Like you are owning on Phoenixes. That's a good point. Um, but the, it's that middle ground, like eight to 16 that I feel like war flag really falls off. But I think that that's kind of like cool in a way. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I've always had problems with items like that. Kind of like emperor's armor because like, it, it is really good in those situations for sure. Like g giving somebody your whole team 40% attack speed, you have a fire and a Phoenix, that thing is just going to be gone. The 20% move speed is insane for your team. You push a wave, then you run in. Mm -hmm. Like no one can get hit. You're dodging so many abilities. You're killing everything so fast. But games like, at least in the competitive scene, should just be one in the jungle around fires more so, right? Like it's that pivotal fight around the fire giant. Who's going to win the team fight? Who gets the fire giant? And the war flag, whatever it's called, like that, the war banner doesn't do anything for you there. Right. Same thing with like emperor's armor. Like I think that that item, like I personally really don't like it because it's just a useless item in the jungle. It doesn't do anything. It's either saying, okay, we're winning the game, we're just gonna go push all the towers, in which case you probably don't need it anyways, or we're losing the game, we're not gonna contest any fire giant, in which case you're kind of on the back foot anyways. Yeah. And, like you'd rather have like a sov or something like that instead. So those items, like, I'm, I'm gonna have to try it for sure. But I still kind of, I don't really like it because it doesn't help your jungle fight at all for the most part. It just seems kind of like if you're winning, if you're in a position with Fire Giant sieging and you have a decent team comp and you play it right, you should be able to get something anyways. You don't need that overkill like we just win the game once we get fire. Because the Fire Giant to me is kind of like the bigger objective. Can we win that jungle fight to give ourselves that advantage to win the game? Sure. And if you're still the 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 Phoenix, you know, if you're on, hey, we just got Fire Giant, I hit level 17, War Banner is probably going to feel insane. But you can also go, Spartan flags better for those jungle fights, right? Where you just get mm -hmm. the little flag that gives you increased power um, in that radius. So I'm excited. I hope the war flag is good enough to be to compete. I would, you know, Sentinel seems like by far the best option, but there's a lot of time between now and the and the beginning of the season um, for for changes to to come in and potentially be made. Uh, you mentioned going Thebes Sov a lot. What what is your typical build path on your on your run of the mill guardian right now for for people who are trying to to climb the ranked streets and support? I've kind of been like I don't in ranked I build a lot more selfishly just because like I'm playing like I'm usually playing a lot of weird characters to be honest like I tried Sukiyomi sport like Guan Yu sport stuff like that. <laughs> well, uh, what's the report? What sorry? What's the report on Sukiyomi support? It's fine but you have a lot of really bad matchups because any single route in the game is gonna absolutely put you in the dirt mm -hmm. you're not tanky for a long time because i go power boots which is sick so if you die once in the early game you are kind of screwed mm -hmm. and if they pick a slew of different characters you can get owned but it is really fun you do a lot of damage <laughs> and you get in there which is pretty important okay wow all right Those so it's got a lot of negatives a few pros yeah Barra, testing when you're thinking about different you know adcs that you're going to be playing who do you think's mm -hmm. pairing up with that Tsukiyomi support real well what cheese to the Tsukiyomi support wine are you are you having for dinner mm, probably a nice little arachne adc oh so we can both Zero get in there at the same time, I mean, we're not gonna be able to siege a tower, we're not gonna be able to siege a phoenix, but we that's can not demolish... true. What do you mean? He can hit the phoenix. I have ranged autos too, yeah. man. But 
what happens when someone gets between you and... Then you kill him. He's taking damage. He's done. Oh, okay. okay. He had to have run over the cow troughs to get there, Barra. Exactly. <laughs> and then Definitely you know he's taking dead. the white auto with the 45 true damage right to his dome. Yep. <laughs> wow. That's what I want. Okay. <laughs> Follow up on that, maybe? Real quick. Do you think I of the Jungle or anything like that has a place in support for like a double jungle meta? I know you can't invade early, but do you think there's a potential to like... I mean, everyone hates junglers, so is there a potential to chase around the jungler, leech their farm, harass them after like the first minute? AKA Neil's favorite metas of all time. That is true. Yeah, the, I think the, the map is so big, it's really hard to like to get support when you need it. So, like, if, if there's a support that can meet the enemy jungle, there's backs, mm -hmm. and, like, the waves are meeting the other supports in dual, and, like, who's going to go help that guy? Like, the mid laner, maybe. But if you're mm -hmm. getting out pressured in mid and the support's there, like, you're never going to have help, right? So I think there is potential. But it's kind of like you said, I just think it's a bit later in the game. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think as a support you're really... Like, stealing it is, is ideal, but even slowing down the jungle is just as important, if, like, if you can. I don't. I don't know though. I feel like you'd still maybe just want like a like a war flag. Is it necessary for you to get like an eye of the jungle to clear the camp anyways? Because if the other jungler's around, he's just gonna own you if you try and use your abilities on it. Mm -hmm. And if he's not there, you're gonna get it anyways. If you have like a war flag or something. So True, yeah. I think there is some potential. Like I said, because the map is so big, but the invaders curse makes it a bit weird. And I think you might be better off maybe like trying to gank and whatnot. Because what farm would you take? Like usually you're taking backs or something, right? Mm -hmm. But the backs, the duo side backs are so to the way. Those are kind of hard to take. And the those feel terrible backs, to go to from duo, by the way. 100%. There's just no way. You can only do them on a base. Good, those are mine. Mm -hmm. And the solo <laughs> side backs are, like, they're they're not super accessible either, to be honest. Like, it's not very easy mm -hmm. to invade people because the map is so big. You're kind of out of position, right? Because I feel like if I'm doing his backs and, like, the other supports in duo lane, my ADC has to play so scared, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing his backs... If I don't know where he is, there's probably support around me, like a jungler or mid. And then in dual lane, this guy's on an island, right? Mm -hmm. Like, lots of times, that's how I felt this season, is, like, if I go to soul lane, to gank soul lane, my ADC just dies, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's no counter gank. Or if I'm in dual lane, trying there's to gank someone, I go to soul lane. There's nothing about it either. Like, <laughs> when other people are there, you know. You it's true. Know. It's true. It just feels like everyone's kind of on an island, like, in the side lanes this season. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just can't be everywhere at once anymore. Oh no, can't be everywhere at once and just winning yes, all my trades. But I'm... that means no one else can be everywhere at once, which is good for me. That is good for you. Okay, what uh, what what builds would you recommend for our normal Guardian players out there? You know, the, the, the honest, hard-working folk who are trying to lock in Athena and, and win some games. Oh no. I haven't been buying much Sov. Like, I'll still do if there's four Fizz, but just assuming there's like a three Fizz, two Magic kind of split. On most Guardians, I've just been going sentinels into tank boots and then depending on the character you can go a binding or you can rush your thieves and then after that i've been going just prey win usually and then i've actually been building damage in uh my last two slots if i can fit it mm. like a magi sometimes but i just find if you have sentinels thieves and prey win you're already instantly just tanky enough like once you get those all online and if you go thieves into prey win it gives you kind of every it's kind of hitting all the bases for you individually you have a lot of health from your thieves a lot of protections from your Thieves. You have HP 5 in there as well, which is nice. And then you have the 20% CDR and the other ad ad additive protections from your Pridwin and the tankiness from your ult. So those two items back-to-back -back have been feeling really good. It can be a little bit slow, though, for sure, because stacking Thieves first isn't as good power spike-wise for, like, building a Sov or something like that. But I've just been... I've always been a player, I think, who's gotten a lot of utility items. I don't like being... Like, 325 of each protection, mm -hmm. like, 4,000 HP. That's never really been my style. I just think that that's a bit redundant. So I usually have just... I've been trying a lot of just Thebes, Pridwin. Uh, you can maybe throw a Wingblade in there or something, and then just get your Sentinels and Brace online, and you're kind of, like, two above 200 of each protection. Usually late game, maybe around 3,000 HP still. And then you have these other items you can dabble with. So it could be, like, a Spear of the Magus. On some characters, I've been building Staff of Mirrodin because of the 10% pen is really impactful now with the sentinels embrace mm. and it gives you the extra 10 percent cooldown so between pridwin and mirrodin with the 500 pot that's 40 percent cooldown which is nice and then obviously having more abilities in sports always really nice like i've been doing on aries six chains is nothing to scoff at mirror <laughs> broken like like having extra wall or freeze is really really impactful so that's kind of what i've been doing i've just been going like thebes pridwin 
And on a character like Fafnir or something, I've been going Binding before the Thieves if you're stunned, like your CC feels really good, or like a Cthulhu or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, someone in chat asked uh, thoughts on the new blade items in support. Basically, the, the Wing Blade, Witch Blade, getting some protections. Um, have those, do you think that those are, I mean, those are just in general very situational items, but do you think that they have to be, you know, oh my god, they've got nemesis is the only way they kill me so wing blade is just super good here or if i just need a little bit of extra magical protection or something like wing blade is gonna fit in a lot of comps yeah i think it's a bit of both like wing blade is it's just it's just nice i think now like if you're against like a silla or something you're like oh wing blade is kind of nice here because like when if i'm dancing around the edge of a crush the extra move speed helps you run out of it or something like that or maybe the ccr is nice or maybe they have like an on her as well and the extra magical prots are are, are just a nice quality of life thing i think that is kind of still a situational item but it just never really feels bad to build anymore like just the fact that it has protections on it now with like a bunch of hp it just you can't really go wrong with it to be honest so i think it's it's definitely a, it's gonna be seen way more this year but i don't necessarily know if that's a good thing that they just like gave movement speed items that like should be situational protections to make them more of like a catch-all item i kind of liked where they were at before where it's just like a where you have to make kind of a sacrifice to build them there has to be a big enough pro like you said against nemesis if you're ymir getting wing blade is like so so nice mm -hmm. but now that it has the extra magical protections on it kind of feels like it's 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 not so much an option as it might be like a like a necessity now which is mm -hmm. weird but i think those blades can be really really good with uh like the build i was talking about too if you want to be a bit tankier you could just go like like a thebes pridwin or like thebes wing blade pridwin and you're gonna feel really good or like which blade as well yeah um neil here's where your trial begins uh we buttered you up <laughs> We've sat you here. We've gotten you nice and comfortable. Admit to me right now, the tank boots are the best item in the game. They are. Like, it's, like, when you build the tank boots, when you finish them, you are, it is, like, the best protection power spike you can get in the entire game for, like, the time in the game. I think they're just, like, I thought they were broken. I was, like, pl building them a lot right before they buffed them and just threw on more HP or something like that. And I was, like, these things aren't okay. Like, when you build them and you hit someone with it, it's just pretty evident just by feeling it out that this person has just become unkillable out of nowhere. Like, as soon as you get fighting at tank boots, you actually feel like you're unkillable. I think it's just kind of ridiculous. I think it just really limits the ways you can play the game. Like, if I see an enemy in your mirror and finish his tank boots, I'm like, that guy isn't really a good option anymore. Mm -hmm. So you have to commit so much into them. If anyone else is around, it can just go south, right? You could trade, like, one for one. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that they're just too, they're just too strong. They just give you too many protections. They give you a ton of HP. Like, they're they're cheap as well. I don't know. It just kind of, to me, kind of bottlenecks your options. Because they're just... You can't go wrong building them ever. And like I said, it just lets you play, like, really loose and really just annoying. And I think it's kind of... Kind of, like, reduces the skill gap, I guess. Because all of a sudden, positioning becomes a little less important as well. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think they're kind of bogus. I think they should be nerfed, personally. Hear that chat, everyone out there who thinks that it's a burst meta right now and that ev that tanks aren't tanky enough. <laughs> well, no. I mean, let's well, not let's not take yeah, nerf yeah. the boots and straw Definitely. man be here. Nerf Still burst meta. Nerf the boots. You heard it here first. That's what that's what we should be doing. Maybe take sixty power off rod. No. Anyways, uh, Neil, if let's say that they, that. Uh, our, our local support friends who, who are playing support, trying to climb up the ranked leaderboards here early. Let's say they don't have the... Um, they're not ready to pull out the Hachiman and the Tsukiyomi support. Okay. What, Shameful. Uh, what more <laughs> traditional supports would you recommend for our, uh, for our friends out there trying to climb? Well, dude, if you're playing ranked, you're trying to climb, just play pressure. It's just the easiest way to win. It's not even close. Like... It's uh, I hate it so much because I just want to play all this janky stuff, and I just I'm just getting ran down every game because people are just locking in like Ymir every game, they're locking in like Hercules every game, they're locking in like Sobek every game, and these characters are just like really good at all parts of the game. It feels like, mm -hmm. and so if you're trying to climb, I would just lock in characters like that where you just have a, a strong impact and you can play pretty individually, and you can have like a pretty large impact as well. So I think those characters are strong. I, I felt like Fafnir actually hasn't been that bad, but he's always a lot better in ranked, in my opinion, than competitive because you don't get run at as much. Mm. Like, people are less coordinated, but just the way the itemization has gone with him, you can build super squishy and do a ton of damage on him, which has been really fun. 
So, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just say, like, the, the Amirs, the Herx, the Sobex look really good right now. You see them a lot, and I think that those characters do perform really well into a lot of other characters in the meta. And you're just going to have pressure, and when you have pressure, when you're trying to climb in ranked or whatever, you're always going to be in the driver's seat. It's kind of on you to lose the game if you're ahead, so that's always kind of the spot you want to be in in ranked. Uh, Bera, for you, what uh, what supports are you liking seeing in your duo lane whenever you're locking in Scotty with Eye of the Jungle for some reason? Okay, I had to test it, and the test worked. So, <laughs> Good to hear. It worked. It was fun. Oh. Okay, I don't know if it was the best thing to build. It wasn't, but I can tell you. Okay, all right, all right, mid later, you have one build. <laughs> you think you can talk to other people? Oh, looks like another world. conduit gem game here. Hmm. I think I'll <laughs> wow. try conduit gem this game. Taking a look at their draft, I'm looking at conduit gem this time around. Just based on what I'm seeing. Flag, <laughs> and then you just let the minions kill each other. Oh. For me? No, for mid laners. Oh. Like, you just never okay. actually lasted a single minion. I've taken that, that in. Good. I've thought about it. Your jungler okay. comes and you two-man everything. I think I'm going to buy Conduit Gem. Okay, anyways. Uh, Fair enough. Bear, what, what do you like seeing oh. uh, alongside you in the duo lane right now? Okay. I like the gods that Neil listed. Kind of any, like, pluck engage gods or just... Ymir, because Ymir is still broken. Mm -hmm. um, and then personally, Xing Tin. I have loved Xing Tin this season. He feels so strong. I feel like, because you can kind of just dodge everything, and then you can also burn beads. And then your one is like one of the most broken abilities in the game. And you kind of just can't die on that character. So I'm pretty sure he is actually OP. Is there something that's more unkillable than Xing Chen who just finished Tank Boots? Because I don't think I've... No. That, dude, that That's guy... so annoying. Shing Chen, who's just finished Tank Boots, is the immortal conundrum we were just talking about. That he needs it's to so be stupid. released from his mortal shell. Like, it is un it is impossible to kill that god after he finishes tanks. And if your boy is getting totems, you literally have permanent HP 5 the whole lane, and mm -hmm. you're just like, this is OP. 100%, yep. yeah. I don't know. That character, it's kind of like the Fafnir, I think. It's just going to be good, right? Because Jing Chen mm -hmm. too, like, late game, does a ton of damage. Oh. And you just have so much innate survivability, kind of like Fafnir, where you can get away building less protections, less less uh, HP, and you're building more damage. So, like, if you just went, like, Binding Thieves, Pridwin, and then went, like, uh, you could go anything. You could go Deso, you could go... Uh, Mirrodin is actually super, super good on Jing Chen. Like, all your buttons are mm -hmm. always good. I was going to say, yeah, dude. Mirrodin and Jing Chen would be yeah. OP. Yeah, like... Chronos Pendant, too. Like, like, you can get whatever you want. You get a Python. Like, and literally, you can get anything in, like, your last two slots, and you're just going to slam people. It's insane. It's actually kind of crazy, yeah. That sounds kind of fun. If you have the Sentinels upgrade, and they have an auto-attack jungler, and you won that jungler while he's <laughs> diving, bruh. Can't beat that. OP. Exactly. It's true, yeah. It is. It is true. Dude, yeah. I kind of feel like going to run it down with some Shing Chen with tank. It's actually so fun, man. I I've had more fun playing those Shing Chen support games than I have ADC. <laughs> <laughs> you literally can't die and you out damage everyone in the game. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cue that That's up. That's my tonight. Cthulhu support. You just go what? binding thieves <laughs> and then full damage. What? Why would you, you, heard you go? Because you just kill everybody. If you get a good matchup, you literally just kill everybody. There's, There's nothing the enemy can do. There's no way could lose. List the good, good matchups here. For, no, it's uh, for actually so support. sick and ranked. It's just actually so. I actually don't lose my character in ranked. It's so free. What okay. What are you seeing on the other side that you're like instantly Cthulhu support? <laughs> what What do you? If this liking? guy's locked in, in Persephone. I'm just gonna run you down. Like you can't get away from me. I'm running you down. If you're locked in an Afro, you don't have enough damage to kill me. I'm running you down. If you're just locking in something where you can't run for me, I'm just gonna slam you. I go. Sentinels, tank boots, binding, uh, Thebes, and then you just go like Deso, Magus, and then like a pen item, and you literally have three damage items, and you just slam everybody into the, into the grave. Don't you just die there, ADC? You just go blink, and you get upgraded horrific, and you just horrific them. All right, <laughs> and you've just learned how. To and you're a like you're assuming that player. someone on your team is doing something. Like it's a team well, game. Like if this, if everybody slam you, of course they're gonna like, of course they're gonna die. But somebody's yeah. doing something to stop that man. Uh huh. Maybe you've typed to somebody, hey, just hit this guy, and they do it for you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm wow. not. That's I'm not a scientist. Thing. All I'm just saying is it's broken. <laughs> Give it a try, and you're gonna own. There I, you go. That's my guarantee. I'll try it's got it. my seal of approval. Neil Ma, two times seal of approval right there for the Cthulhu support. So, so make sure you guys time. are trying that. 
Uh, all right, guys. Right here at the end of the episode, as per usual, it's time for our random question of the week. Still yet to be sponsored. We still got to get out the, the prediction, guys, on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, spo- I'll sponsor it. Will you? Yes. All right, we'll put what you in, in touch with Aaron. What? Okay. Yeah, well, so you guys can talk really numbers. Be giving you much. Well, oh. but I will be sponsoring it. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it. I'm sure we could okay. uh, we could work something out. We can in that bring it up next week. Okay. Um, Neil, sponsor question. Super Bowl just happened uh, here in America. A very boring game, unfortunately, because uh, that's just the way it is sometimes. But it was better than the Rams Super Bowl a couple of years ago, which was the worst football game I've ever watched in my whole life. More importantly than the game itself, of course, is the snacking around the Super Bowl. Um, Neil, have you ever even attended a Super Bowl party before in your entire life? Of course. Yeah? Me and my friends every year, but this year, always have a Super Bowl party. And we Huge. Watch. Okay, great. So you can participate. What is key for, you know, if for, for those of you who don't care about American football, you know, you're, we're talking World Cup parties, so, you know, something along those lines. Uh, for big sports get-togethers where snacks are key, what do you need there in order for it to be successful? Neil, we can kick it off with you because I've got a feeling that Barra is going to say something stupid. What? Uh, well, well, he's got a couple of minutes to think about it so he doesn't make an absolute fool of himself. Right. Cheese dip. <laughs> that's fine. Good start. Well, that's, that's, that's respectable, fine. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for me, like, wings are always great. Like, you need the appetizers, obviously. You need, like, the appetizers in the main course. Yeah. And if you, for appetizers, like, you always got to have nachos. That's just, like, come on. Like, nachos. Yeah. Have some salsa, maybe some guac, maybe some sour cream. Seven layer dip is a huge bonus. That stuff bangs. Mm hmm. Wings, like always, need to have wings at a Super Bowl party, and then anything after that, like for after, it's kind of just a bonus to me, honestly. Like usually, I'm just doing nachos, wing, dip, kind of thing. And that's usually good for me. And then for main course, like usually we do pizza. Like I could see if someone wanted to do like more of a homemade thing, like chilies would be good too. But I've always just kind of been pizza, wing, nachos kind of guy personally. I think that's a, I think that's a smart call. I think you're in the right ballpark. All right, Barry, you got it off on the right foot. Cheese what? dip, great start. Don't mess it up now. You have, you have to have more than one? I thought it was favorite snack. Well, yeah, did you hear the great answer that Neil gave? That he, he broke yeah, it down? Yeah, mine's cheese dip. That's it. Like, what like, type of yeah. cheese dip, what, John? What do, you dip what do you dip with the cheese dip? Yeah, what? My what? fingers. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> what? Well, now you're trolling, and you've ruined you're the sanctity of this question. You're palming the dip? You're palming the dip in a party yeah. scenario? Two I'm fingers. just imagining John in his living room, like you know those concrete things, like you put your hands in. Yeah. He's just got two of those. He's double fisted them, slamming just, his hands into them. Get him in there. All right, man. You, what? What do you mean what? You cannot what me after we yeah, asked you. You asked what? for my favorite snack. It's cheese dip. You what? Never, what? All right, next year, whatever dip, we can dip actually have a the party. existence of something to dip with. What else would you dip in it besides chips? What kind of chips, you can use, John? You could use vegetables. You could use, like, crackers. I don't know. Yes. You could boot, Pita, use, like, carbs, like some sort bread. of bread or something. I don't know. Okay, since you guys are trolling, I'll just say, like, you know, some crackers. You know? Since you're trolling, I'll troll. I'll say crackers. That's, like, not ideal, but it's not, like, <laughs> it's not ideal. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to hit you right now with the best dipping chip on the market it's multi-grain scoop Tostitos. That's what you should be going in with. Those no, things, scoops are not great. No, those things are the best. Why do you like the multi-grain? The no. There's something about them, Neil. They are addicting. I would eat multi-grain Tostitos by themselves. Tostitos sponsor You can't, us, like, by the describe way. why the multi-grain over the it, normal they're kind? Salty and, uh, they're still salty. That's a key part of what I want to be dipping. You know, I need my dipping chip to have a lot of salt. Um, yeah, but and, scoops and are just bad, you can't sound. bind them. You can bite them because they they aren't as like curled in. They're a little bit more flat than other than the mm-hmm. than the initial uh, run through of scoops. And the multi grain scoops, I'm not like I hate wheat bread. I'm not getting like the healthy option at Publix or anything like that. I'm not doing it. I'm telling you that there's something about the multi grain scoops. They're built different. I'm not a multi grain yeah, kind of guy. You've got to try them before you can knock them. I'm putting my right. reputation on the line. With multi-grain scoops here, scoops fellas. Scoops are just bad. I have never... Everyone I've served multi-grain scoops to have gone, <laughs> yo, these chips are dope. And I'm like, I know. Try them out. See, I'll the problem is, is there's like an imbalance of power between you and your friends. You have like your own mm. podcast. You're a hot shot. And they're afraid <laughs> if they say the multi-grain chips are bad, that it'll ruin their careers and their livelihood. 
Smart mm-hmm. enough. And I that's agree. just not okay. But that being said, I got nothing else. No, that, that's it. That, I think mean, that's, that's good. A ter- terrible that's take it. from aggro. I'm right, and you're right. Why are the scoops bad, Barra? Why do you not like scoops? Because biting them, you just feel idiotic. Maybe you do, because you're used to sucking on your fingers. Are you sticking the whole you thing in your mouth? The dick. <laughs> <laughs> Rip to Neil's mouth stitches. <laughs> There's oh, nothing no. wrong with licking some cheese dip off your fingers oh, late no. night, bro. Yeah, if it's midnight, you know, I'm at the computer. I got the cheese dip. In but front this of isn't me. this isn't like the the context. The context here is the Super Bowl. Surrounded by friends, family, loved ones, people who respect you and who you respect. Yeah, we're all and then you're getting our fingers. coming through like a tether. He's uh, wrist yeah, no, 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 deep. No, 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 no. He's wrist deep in the cheese dip before the the freaking kickoff. Everyone that comes to the Super Bowl party, it bears with their own cheese dip like a tub. It's huge and there's... Oh, no, 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 no. Dude. The Salter household. I hope you guys wash your hands, man. That's all I gotta say. Oh, the way that's it, extra flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I will not be debating that. That is extra <laughs> flavor. That's a fact. Uh, yeah. All right. That's that's enough of that. <sighs> Clearly, Monday podcasts are a danger to society, uh, as as we've learned. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you're watching on Bears YouTube. Hello. subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff uh twitch.tv slash aggro twitch.tv slash aggro is where YouTube. all the good content is neil you don't use a youtube but wait do you actually oh this is bad no he doesn't he doesn't okay good neil doesn't upload Speak youtube videos me. but he does stream on twitch <laughs> twitch.tv it's niruma right it's no it's neilma your oh. twitter is still niruma right? mm. all right you twitch, can't always get everything you want. Twitch.tv slash Neil Ma, N-E-I-L-M-A-H. That's, that's the place to go for that. And make sure you're giving us a good rating here on the Prediction Network and checking out all of their other great podcasts. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week as we go into Jungle, the most broken role uh, in mm-hmm. Season 8, because it's another year of Jungle, and that's all there is to it. Barra, you know what to do, and I mean this with no pressure whatsoever. Please say goodbye to our cherished audience. Bye.